Good morning, church. I want to tell you all, thank you, first off, for all the kind words and prayers and cards I received during the time that I was back in Arkansas taking care of my stepfather's funeral. They are very much appreciated. Touched my heart much. Um, and I hope you guys got a chance when you walked out this morning, the sun hit me in the face, and the first things that came to my mind was shout to the Lord, all the earth let us sing. It's such a glorious morning this morning, and I hope you guys got a chance to enjoy that. We do have a few announcements. Um, the November, December upper rooms are available in the commons. And the men's Bible study is on Wednesday night from six, starting at 6.15 with social time. The lesson starting promptly at 6.30. Um, all on Zoom study is Don Knows, which is a discipleship evangelism program. Join us and grow in discipleship and the power of the Holy Spirit. Wednesday night, Ladies Bible Study is beginning an Advent series on Wednesday, October 25th. ...by Dr. David Jeremiah. Contact Debbie Creasy for more information. We are having Feathers for Food Thanksgiving food mission starts this week. And so if you are here at church... You can take a feather from the turkey and return the feather and the food item by November 15th. The group is going to go around, pick up food from your front porches. And if you just want to let us do the shopping, you can designate your giving to Feathers for Food, and we'll take care of all of it for you. And then on November 9th from 2 to 7 p.m. in the NPR, there will be a blood drive. You can sign up at redcrossblood.org with the sponsor being TUMCP. So let's take this moment to center our hearts and minds on worshiping the Lord.
We read, we listen. He is God's preacher. And we will rejoice in what he says. Great God, we just ask you to. Week, and we'll give you the praise and the glory. In the name of our Jesus, our Christ, and our Lord. Amen. Opening hymn, Standing on the Promises. join together in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit us at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And you may be seated.
time for the special music. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you, Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one we could ever say. Worthy, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Only there is no one.
Our scripture of the morning is taken from Matthew 5, 1 through 16. Hear these words. Now when Jesus saw the crowd, he went up on a mountain and sat down. His disciple came to him. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. You see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad. You are the salt of the earth, but the salt loses its saltiness. How can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it on. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. <clears throat> Years ago, when I was a teenager, we had a minister in this come to this church. His name was Dr. Harvey Colonel Lee Swan. Any of you that are older in the congregation would remember him. But for some reason, he took a liking to me and I to him. And where he went, most of the time, you'd find me. He had, he thought at one time that I would make a good preacher. I don't know what ever gave him that idea. But anyway, there was a, there was a convocation on the ministry. It was a group of people, of ministers, that had set up this convocation for all of those young persons who might be entering the ministry. And Dr. Swan believed I should go. So I went. It was an interesting time. I met a lot of young people my age there. And as the, as the convocation began, there was a young minister that gave a, a sermon or preached a while on why he had chosen the ministry and what he had gotten out of it so far. But there was an older man there who walked with a cane, older preacher, and he was preaching on, would I do it again? One of the things that Dr. J.J. Reeves said, told was a story a story about a young man who worked a field with his father. It was a cornfield, and Dr. Reeves said that it, it grew magnificent corn. The boy worked and worked and worked, but he said there was something in the boy that made him feel he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. There was something else on his mind and in his heart. Dr. Reeves said, one day the boy was plowing the fields and he stopped in the middle of the field and he began to pray, God, there is something on my heart and on my mind. I'm supposed to be some, doing something else besides this. Please, God, show me what I'm supposed to do. Give me an example.
there in the clouds, the clouds had formed the initials GPC. He said, that's it. Go preach Christ. So he gave up the form. He went to college. He got his degree, and he went to seminary, and he got another one. And he was appointed to his first church. After a year, the bishop had to move him because he had caused so much dissension in the church. He was appointed to a second church. After a couple of years, he had to move him again for the same reason. And then a third church, and, for this, and the same thing happened. So the bishop felt maybe he ought to take him aside and talk to him. So he called up a young man in. to the ministry and about plowing the fields and finally looking up to the sky and seeing the initials GPC and he said I took that to mean go preach Christ That happens to a lot of ministers. Maybe not in the same way, but with ministers feeling they have a call to preach only to find out they should have stayed where they were. In fact, Carolyn and I were serving, not serving, we were part of a little congregation in Hampton where the minister admitted to us that he did not really understand that he had a call to the ministry. And I have to be honest with you, it showed. It really and truly showed. I think the first thing a minister has to realize that standing in a pulpit does not make a person a preacher of God's word. Interpreting scripture means a deep, deep relationship with God and with God's Christ. For well, it's only with such a relationship that one can understand and interpret the word made flesh. We don't understand what, that word, what those words are many times. I had a friend tell me one time that they had just received a new minister in his church. And he said, I like him, George, I like him. I said, well, Bobby, why do you like him? And he said, because he preaches the word. And I said, Bobby, what is the word? And I left him there struggling for an explanation. And one of the churches that I served, a couple started coming. The church was out in the woods, so to speak, out of main drive, and I couldn't understand why this couple was there. We hadn't taken a member in the church in God knows how long. And that I speak with you a minute, and he said, yes, and I arranged the time. And I went to their house, and I sat down, it was a lovely house, and we had a lovely conversation. And I said, I really have to ask you something. Why have you chosen our church to come to? And you know what I expected them to say? Because we like the people. Because you have the right programs there. We enjoy the music. We enjoy what's going on. That's what they said. They said to me, you say what we want to hear. You say what we want to hear. <laughs> and I said to them, if I'm saying what you want to hear, please go to another church. Find you another church. Because I'm supposed to tell you what you ought to hear, not what you want to hear. I think the greatest preacher in the Bible, or one of the greatest preachers in the Bible, was the Apostle Paul. And Paul says about preaching, I 
preach Christ and him crucified. I preach Christ and him crucified. So we have to look to the one great preacher in the Bible for an explanation of what a preacher should say. And that's none other than Jesus himself. In the Beatitudes, as they're called, Jesus begins to tell the preachers, the people, something about God. And he hits home. Whatever Jesus says, the people want to hear more. But not all people. There are those who thought Jesus should keep his mouth shut. You see, he was rocking the boat, but he didn't care. He had something to say, and he said it. The same is true with the preacher of today. And disturb the comfortable. You see, Jesus was speaking for God. It was the same as when he told the people the story of the Good Samaritan. The truth hurt. That's another thing the preacher has to do. Tell the truth. And not worry about who it hurts. Jesus was the true preacher. And his words are good for today. And then there is a fact that Jesus had the blessing of God. Here is my beloved son, he told Peter, James, and John, in whom I am well pleased. Ministers today have to feel that same blessing. They must understand that it is God for whom they speak. And all the time I spend in the pulpit, I always considered the fact that I had a calling a higher calling, if you will. It always challenged me to prepare and to prepare again and never be satisfied with what I had to say. Well, it was that one hour on Sunday that counted. I had a minister friend of mine by the name of Lewis Carson who told me that if you are not prepared for that one hour on Sunday, you've wasted your whole week. Jesus was always prepared for whatever he said because he spoke for God, don't you see? Preachers always trust that they are prepared to speak for God. Personally, I was never assured like Jesus. There are some things we all must always remember. Jesus is not only our Savior, but God's true preacher. Those in the pulpit today can only try to be the best they can and to preach the word that God gives them. Amen. It's now time to raise up our prayers for those who need our concerns and for the church in general. You may call the names out loud or let them rest in your heart. Let's pray. Great God, we come to you at this time with our hearts open and our minds open, ready to receive your good word and your blessing. There are those who are hurting and we need to lift them up to you. We need to keep them in our prayers. We need to Reach out to them. So
us each new day knowing that you're part of their lives and will always give them the courage they need. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. He taught his disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you stand as we sing our closing hymn? Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. I receive the benediction, the good word of God. Go in God's grace, go in God's peace, go in God's love. And may God bless all of you. Amen. Thank you, Lord.